Welcome friends to a review on the 2024 Mazda CX-90 Select. That's right, this is the base model. There's not too many reviews on a base CX-90. So I'm pleased to present this vehicle to you and I'll be sure to give you my detailed driving thoughts because this is not my first time checking out the CX-90. I drove the plug-in hybrid version in March of 2023. And to be honest, I was a little disappointed with it because I wasn't a big fan of the drivetrain. That was a heavier SUV riding on larger 21 inch wheels and the ride quality wasn't great. It was crashing over the bumps. Here with this base select, this weighs over 530 pounds less than the plug-in hybrid. We're rocking the 19 inch wheels and we have the inline six engine made it to the eight speed automatic. And you're getting all of this for the unbelievable price of under $40,000. But stay tuned until the end of this video where I will share with you ways on how you can save even more, all right? You can take like 8% off MSRP on the CX-90s. Again, I'll talk more about that uh, towards the conclusion segment. I wanted to quickly take a moment to appreciate the CX-90's exterior because it's unlike most other vehicles in its class. There are no hard lines or sharp angles with the CX-90, in fact it's all curves and that makes for an, an interesting design language and that means this vehicle really stands out in the three row segment. For instance, the doors in certain lighting, it looks like there's a massive dent in the doors because the front wheel arches are a bit wide and then they taper in towards the doors and then it tapers out again towards the rear. And that creates a very unique and special effect with the doors. It's pretty elegant. The rear end is a bit bulbous, but overall I do really appreciate the exterior looks of this SUV, comment below, let me know your thoughts. But for me, this seems a little bit more exotic and upscale in its exterior design compared to vehicles like the Grand Highlander, the Pathfinders, etc. And another thing I wanted to touch on is the wheels. The smaller 19 inch wheels, they surprisingly suit the CX-90 extremely well. I understand that in pictures and in videos, the CX-90 wheels, they don't really look that great, but in person, those wheels, they have like a three-dimensional design to the spokes. You have to see it in person to be able to appreciate it. In fact, in this color combination with the dark blue and those smaller silver wheels, it reminds me of like an old school BMW from the early 2000s. It's got that type of vibe, in my opinion, that's just kind of what it reminds me of. But in a two-dimensional picture or a video, you can't really appreciate the looks. And that's the case with most vehicles. You see it two-dimensionally, so we can't really judge it properly. Vehicles tend to look better in person than it does in the video. Anyway, let's move on to the driving segment now. We have here the inline six with 280 horsepower, 332 pounds feet of torque. Sadly, I have not tried the Turbo S with 340 horsepower, uh, but what's interesting about this engine is it takes regular fuel and that's amazing. However, you will not benefit from putting premium fuel into this base inline six. All right, with the Turbo S, yeah, you get 340 horsepower, but if you use regular fuel with the Turbo S, you will get 319 horsepower, which is still more than the base, but I just thought I would uh, mention that to you. Anyway, I'm so satisfied with the pulling power of this base engine that there's no real reason to go Turbo S uh, other than to unlock some of the features that you might want. So the engine has been pure bliss for me. It hasn't been doing anything weird. It's also made it to a 48 volt mild hybrid system. 
it'll actually shut down the engine and start coasting on that electric power for a little bit. But I have noticed some issues with the mild hybrid system. I'll get to that. But let's just focus on the good for right now. This has effortless thrust around town, out on the highway. You don't have to punch the throttle. You can just ease into it and you have all the torque that you need. Eight speed automatic, that shifts flawlessly. In fact, you don't even notice the vehicle shifting. And when you're coming to a stop, because we have that 48 volt mild hybrid system, um, it's using the electric power to do the rev matched downshifts. So you have crispy downshifts at all times. The engine sounds great. Genuinely, it has some character injected into it. So that's phenomenal. And the gas mileage, I also appreciate that. This is rated to get 24 city, 28 out on the highway. And I have genuinely gotten 28 on the highway with this SUV. Very impressive. Probably the best highway MPG without being a true hybrid. However, in the city though, I've been getting between 18 to 20 MPG. So nowhere near the 24 that they quoted, uh, but I kind of expected that because most three row SUVs, they don't do well in the city. They all get about 18 to 20. So it is what it is. Now, what was the con that I noticed with the mild hybrid system? Well, I like the way this system cuts the engine off when you're coasting. That's gonna save you some fuel, that's great. Uh, we have really smooth um, start stops. You don't get any vibrations or judders when the engine turns on. And part of the reason for that is because this i-stop feature that Mazda is using here, this system, it makes sure that the engine is cutting off the engine when it's at the correct timing or whatever. So when the engine cuts back on, there's no real stress, there's no starter involved. Uh, it's using the electric power to start the vehicle back up. So they're saying that there shouldn't be any real wear and tear to the engine. If there's a mechanic or an engineer watching, I'm sure you can tell us more about that. Anyway, let's take this corner here. But okay, so as you're coasting to a stop, the engine is off, great. But what I've noticed is when you actually come to the stop, the engine actually cuts back on for a second and then it cuts back off. That's really dumb. I don't understand why this system is doing that. You would think that the smoothest way for this vehicle to come to a stop is to have the engine off and for it to remain off once you come to a full stop. I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, I'll try to explain it more in the comment section. Uh, but that's one of the things I noticed. I don't like the way the engine cuts back on, then cuts back off again at a stop. I get it, it's a small battery pack. No, I did not have the AC turned on. No matter what I do, the vehicle is always doing this. Otherwise, I do like the system. Now, another complaint that some people have reported is when you're at a stop and then you set off again, you might notice the transmission behaving strangely. And I've noticed that too sometimes, but it doesn't always occur. It's smooth 99% of the time, so I don't really care. But yes, there are certain times where the transmission can become confused. But for a first attempt, like this is like the first model year, well, technically the first model year um, of this engine and this transmission, this is tuned and calibrated extremely well. Now I say first model year because this particular SUV I'm checking out, it was manufactured in April of 2024. So just recently, all right? And when I last tested the plug-in hybrid, that was March of 2023. And you know it, that was produced even before that. So over time, it's totally possible that Mazda has improved these vehicles without them even disclosing it. Um, there are no open recalls with this SUV. Everything was addressed. Everything is perfect here. So the fact that this is built later into its model year life cycle, perhaps that's why this is tuned and calibrated so well. I don't know. I just thought I would bring it up. 
other things that I feel like make a big difference into why the CX-90 feels so ironed and so perfect is because this weighs about 530 pounds less than the plug-in hybrid and it's also rocking smaller 19-inch wheels, all right? Smaller wheels means a better ride, less rotational mass, etc. By the way, brakes are good too. I do like the stopping power in this. And you don't really notice that weight transfer taking effect. So your occupants, they're not like doing this every time you come to a stop. Really well calibrated, the brakes in this SUV. All right, moving on. Yeah, you got the smaller wheels. It's riding beautifully, all right? Actually, when I first tested this, it had 50 PSI in all four tires. And even with that insanely high tire pressure, I thought that the ride quality was stiff but acceptable all right but when i aired it down to 36 wow this thing really glides over the bumps one of the finest riding three row suvs in the class now so again the smaller wheels and the less weight is really contributing to that we also have two oem tires here for these base models um, we have here the yokohama geo landers but you can also get the toyo open countries both are fine tires however what some people have reported is the yokohamas tend to be a little bit more quieter than the toyo open countries so that's another benefit and it seems to be true uh, there's really not a lot of tire noise road noise or anything like that only out on the highway which is acceptable uh, that's with most vehicles but yeah, this is a very quiet experience. We don't even have here the thicker double pane glass, but regardless of it, we don't get a lot of wind noise at higher speeds. This is a really well insulated cabin. So quietness, refinement, all of that is on point. I also had a chance to drive this SUV in the rain and also out on the highway, and I was doing a really good speed out on the highway and there was no hydro planning. The vehicle felt super stable, very confidence inspiring. Part of that could be because this is a naturally wider SUV and we also have wider tires here than most SUVs in this class. We have your 265 wide tires. If you go with the 21 inch wheels, you get 275 wide tires, something else to note. So yeah, stability is just amazing with this. Taking long sweeping corners, not an issue. Really, I have no actual qualms in the way this SUV drives. However, I will mention something real quick. A lot of people say that this is fun to drive. This is not necessarily fun. It is interesting, it is respectable, and it is commendable, but it's not really fun, okay? It's still, you know, uh, a normal vehicle, okay? It's still like a economy brand that's trying to do luxurious things. If anything, this feels more Audi-esque. That's what most new Mazdas feel like. They're trying to mimic that Audi feel, and that's cool that you're getting this feel for this price point. But that doesn't make it fun. I think we should um, address what fun is. Fun is a Ferrari, a Porsche GT3, a Lexus LC500. These things are fun. This is respectful the way that this feels out on the road especially for a less than 40k starting price that's amazing and the other reason why i bring this up is because i was annihilating this suv on some back roads like really driving it 10 tens and this suv does not like that in fact most mazdas don't feel that great being driven at 10 tens not that anybody does that in the real world i'm just doing it for testing purposes but this feels great at six, seven tenths driving. That's when this feels uh, the best. And that's all most people are going to do. In fact, there is a another aspect of driving the CX-90 that I noticed, which was interesting. When you take your everyday left-hand, right-hand turns, uh, this SUV, you really feel the body roll in this. So you have to take those everyday corners a bit slower so you're not upsetting your 
occupants in the vehicle. All right, uh, but surprisingly, the long sweeping corners, again, this feels stable and confidence inspiring during those maneuvers, but your everyday turns, you kind of have to slow down a bit when you take those corners. In fact, the plug-in hybrid felt even more clumsy because it, it weighs more, right? So you really felt the body roll and that weight being shifted over uh, when you make those everyday turns. This is a lot more controlled and a lot more acceptable. Something else I've noticed when I was testing the CX-90 and driving it very hard, I noticed that if you take left hand or right hand turns really aggressively, you will hear some type of grinding slash groaning sounds coming from the tires or the suspension. It's not tire squeal, that's obviously different, but some type of resistance sound. That's what I'm getting when I take those corners extremely hard same thing when i accelerate hard when i put my foot all the way down on that throttle and i accelerate i'll hear that same grinding slash groaning sound i have no idea what that is i've never experienced that with any other car in fact there was a moment in this review where i did take a left hand corner hard and the vehicle did make that noise i'll play that clip here so you can hear it let's take this corner here all right, hopefully you caught that. It was really subtle, but the vehicle did make that subtle groaning slash grinding sound. That's what I'm saying. This vehicle, it's pretty much telling us that it does not like to be pushed to its limits. There is no satisfaction in doing that. I get it on paper. This car, it looks really good. It's got the double wishbone suspension in the front. All of that is very exotic. It's pushing way above its weight class, but at limit, handling slash driving. That's not the CX-90's forte, but you do have plenty of confidence in this SUV otherwise. But yes, all things considered, this is a very premium driving experience. This rear wheel drive based, all wheel drive system, the inline six engine, a brake pedal where you don't feel like you're being shot through the windshield, but at the same time, you have really good stopping power. These are really difficult traits to pull off here. The steering is also on point. There is no play with it. It's super precise. Again, all aspects of driving this SUV is premium. It feels above its price tag. Again, particularly for the model I'm checking out here, right? A base model. I can't comment on the Turbo S with the larger 21 inch wheels. Um, I don't know how that feels. Hopefully I get one to check out soon for you. But the way you see this SUV here, I can absolutely recommend it to almost anyone, all right? The other thing is because it's a base model, we don't have a sunroof, so there is no hole in our ceiling. Maybe that's also contributing to a more rigid driving structure, I don't know. I don't know how much that affects things with having a sunroof and not having one, but I just thought I would mention it. Regardless, I've enjoyed driving this. Now let's go ahead and let's get into the interior segment now. Let's go ahead and let's cover the interior space of this base model 2024 CX-90. This is a truly wonderful place to spend time in, especially once again for the money. Now they've definitely done some cost cutting here compared to the upper trim levels. For instance, on the front dash area and on the door panels, they're using a hard touch plastic as a piece of trim. They just injected some design into that hard touch plastic. I just thought that was funny but you know what it's okay because it's solid everything is well built there is no creaking or rattling going on here and once again on the door panel they're using a piece of cloth as well when you move up in trim level you're going to see better materials being used nice wood panels and more stitching on that door panel as well but if income and budget permits i would suggest at least going up to the preferred or the preferred plus 
and I'll share more of my reasons why throughout this video. But yeah, we do have here one touch automatic windows for all four windows. We don't have here double pane glass or anything like that, but as we saw during the driving segment, this is still a very quiet machine. You can fit a relatively large bottle in the door pockets and regarding the seats, they are very comfortable indeed and they look great because of the stitching and that kind of middle piping design that they have. I really appreciate that really elevates this cabin space due to these subtle design elements. And keep in mind with the base model, you get leather at seats. You move up to the preferred, which is one step up, you will get leather seats. And on the nicest models, you will get Napa leather seats. But I'm really satisfied with this. They look good and they're extremely comfortable. You have so much lumbar support here on the driver side and you do get electronic seats for the driver. The passenger does get a manual seat in the base model. All right, moving on, we do have here a leather wrapped steering wheel that feels good. You have your paddle shifters here as well. We have automatic headlights and automatic windshield wipers. On the lower models, you get the 10.25 inch infotainment screen. The upper levels get like a 12.3 inch infotainment screen, but this is perfectly fine. It looks amazing. You interact with this with the rotary knob, and that's not an issue. This is one of the most simplistic infotainment systems on the market. A lot of people complain that it's not a touchscreen, but to be honest, I don't really care. And we do have here wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto. When you step up to the preferred plus, you will get wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and a wireless phone charger. So those wireless functions, it does add to the quality of life it's not necessary, but I just thought I would bring it up. And here with the base model, we don't have here heated seats or anything. You have to step up to the preferred to get the heated seats. But another thing that really elevates this cabin is the use of physical buttons and switches that are elegantly laid out here. You have your own separate climate control. I absolutely love that. In the center console, it's really well built and solid. And we have a matte black texture here. On the upper trims, you will get like a nice wood finish and that is beautiful to look at, but whatever. I do appreciate what we have here. Got your MI drive function. So you have your sport and your off-road and your normal modes. The gear shifter, that's a topic of debate for a lot of people. Almost everybody hates this, myself included. This is kind of a weird gear shifter, very unorthodox. However, I did get used to it and I can sort of see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to lock out the park function. So when you're in park, you cannot move the gear shifter. I get it, but this is still unnecessary and it's not my most favorite thing in the world. You have an electronic parking brake, a physical volume knob, always great to see, and some shortcut buttons as well. Same thing with the steering wheel. You have some buttons to control your media and your cruise control functions. So that's all easy, no problems. Cup holders are definitely on the smaller side and you do have a place to put your phone, uh, I suppose. The armrest space is also on the smaller side as well. Typically in this class, vehicles like the Honda Pilot or the Toyota Grand Highlander, they will literally give you like a pickup truck level sized armrest, you know, and we don't have that here and that's pretty unfortunate. The glove box is a decent size but regardless though they could have done a better job with the packaging here but i'm guessing they were a bit constricted because we have this rear wheel drive architecture right anyway the gauge cluster we don't have the full digital cluster that the higher trim levels come with but i don't necessarily need that this is elegantly implemented i love it it's mainly your speedometer that's the only thing that's digital and it shows you your mpgs and other things if you want to see your tire pressure you have to look at it from the infotainment screen all right you have to go to information click enter go to vehicle status monitor go down to maintenance details and that's where you're going to see your tire pressure monitor so you don't have to download the mazda app or anything like that it's buried into your infotainment screen very cumbersome very annoying that should be in your gauge cluster in my opinion other things to talk about the audio system this base audio system is okay. It's not complete garbage. There's some decent clarity here and it does get the job done. However, it's not 
amazing either. There's a lack of punch and a lack of life uh, when it comes to this audio system, especially if you're listening to hip hop music. Yeah, this is going to give you a more dull experience, but the clarity is technically there. Now the Bose audio system that you find in the higher trims, that is truly incredible. One of the best Bose audio systems that Mazda has ever implemented. So that's the two main things, the build quality, and the Bose audio system, these are the two things that stand apart from the rest of the Mazda lineup. These two things are far superior in the CX-90 than the other vehicles. I would say the only real con I've noticed with the interior is in regard to the doors. When you open and close them, they can feel a bit tinny. I don't know why, but that's the only chintzy thing I've noticed. But I guess I can't really complain too much as this is an IIHS top safety pick. You're obviously very safe in this car, but Anyway, uh, I guess one other thing I forgot to mention regarding the doors, this armrest right here, it's like made from memory foam or something. It's the softest armrest I've ever felt. Very impressive. Your elbows, yeah, they're going to be comfortable right there. I do appreciate that. But yeah, um, going back to that audio system, it's just unfortunate that they're gatekeeping that audio system in the higher trim levels. Uh, you are forced to get 21 inch wheels at that point if you want the Bose audio. I wish on this 280 horsepower model on the Premium and the Premium Plus, I wish they would at least give us 20 inch wheels and not just jump straight into 21s. That would have been a nice touch. Regardless, this is what they have going on. I can live with this audio system. So once again, the highest I would go up to maintain the best ride quality is a preferred plus. Also, we do not have here a sunroof. If you go with the preferred, you will get a regular sunroof. On the premium models, you can get a pano moonroof as well. All right, and we do have here a sunglass holder, no garage home link with the base model. You have to step up to get that. So yeah, the main things we're missing here is the heated seats and the garage home link and some type of a sunroof. That's really the main stuff that we're missing here. Another reason why the Preferred Plus is a good model to go with is because that particular trim level unlocks the 5,000 pound towing capacity. So if that's important to you, consider the Preferred Plus. But overall, a very impressive cabin. This is laid out really beautifully, has a luxury vibe to it, and the seats are helping out with that as well due to its design. Let's go ahead and let's talk about these rear seats here. So I am five foot 11, getting in and out of this SUV, very easy, very ergonomic. I do appreciate that. And the rear doors, they will open 90 degrees. So it's very easy to fit child seats in the back. And we also have three zone climate control. And something I forgot to mention is with the base model, they give us USB ports in the front and in the rear. When you move up in trim, they give you USB-C ports throughout the vehicle not a big deal just thought i would mention it but yeah in the back the seats continue to be comfortable back there you can do a lot of miles in this and not feel fatigued i love that and also the leg room in the second row is okay you know like i can sit behind myself primarily because mazda is smart and they have the seats mounted up a little bit higher but keep in mind despite my size i sit closer to the steering wheel than most people uh, of my height so if you're someone who's like 6'4", or even 6'2", and you have the seat leaned back, that's really going to constrict the second row leg room. But overall, I would say the second row is okay. The width is fine for the most part. I remember with the Mazda CX-9, it felt like a more narrow cabin space, and you would really notice it in the front driver's seat as well. Here with the driver seat, at least, I have a lot more width and that seems to have continued in the back as well compared to the CX-9 that this is replacing. Now the third row, that's pretty compromised with the CX-90. I would say that this and the Nissan Pathfinder, they both have the worst third row seats in the class. The best third rows are gonna to go to the Honda Pilot, the Toyota Grand Highlander, the Hyundai Palisade, and the Kia Telluride. I would say these four SUVs, I fit a lot more comfortably in the third row. Now I get it, I'm a fully grown adult, 
You can certainly fit children in the third row of these SUVs. That's pretty much what it's meant for. But, you know, I just bring up the Pilot mainly because that that is the best packaged vehicle in the class. Okay, it's actually smaller than the CX-90 by about two inches in overall length, yet you have massive door pocket spaces, large center armrest, plenty of space in the second and in the third row of the Pilot. It's just the best packaged, you know? very easy to drive as well here with the cx90 is just physically very large but the interior is kind of compromised once again for its physical size that's really the main drawback but can i sit in the third row sure but only if the second row seats scoot up a little bit if the second row is scooted all the way back it is impossible for me to fit my feet with the honda pilot or the Toyota Grand Highlander, the second row can be pushed all the way back and I can still fit back there. Once again, it's fine if you're only going to put children back there or if you're just gonna fold it down completely and use this as a massive two row SUV. That works too because the trunk is pretty massive when you have the third row folded down. And yes, we do have an electronic tailgate with this base model. You can open it from inside the cabin and from the key fob as well so that's really good and when you open up the flap you have a little bit of storage but not a lot usually suvs in this class they'll give you some additional storage space underneath the trunk this doesn't really do that but the cx90 makes up for it by providing you with a spare tire in the trunk that's phenomenal we don't have to use run flat tires here that's great to see. And yeah, that's pretty much everything you need to know regarding this interior space. Hopefully you appreciated that detailed breakdown. And of course, on the screen, I've already showed you what the different trim levels have to come with. So you can make up your own mind on which trim level is gonna fit you and your family the best. However, is this an SUV I would keep long-term? To be honest, I don't think so. This CX-90 has now become just as complicated as any other BMW product now. There are mechanics that have said the same thing regarding the CX-90. You have timing chains located in the back of the engine, similar to the B58 from BMW. Servicing it is going to be pretty expensive when you keep it for 60, 70, 80, 100,000 miles. And keep in mind, Mazda does not offer any free service periods, okay? It's not like BMW who offers three years of free maintenance. There's nothing like that with Mazda. But I also saw on Reddit some mechanical engineer that was bad-mouthing certain mechanics and they were defending all of the complicated choices that Mazda was making. You can go online, you can do your own research and come to your own conclusions, but I've been saying this for a very long time now. Even our everyday economy cars have become extremely complex and kind of disposable, to be honest with you. I mean, this engine, it's an inline six turbo. We have the mild hybrid system. There's a lot of complexity here, not to mention all of these sensors and other electronics for safety tech and actuators that can cost several thousands of dollars so despite this being a vehicle that costs under 40 grand to buy new i personally would not want to keep this past the warranty period and it's not like this car is perfect to begin with i already mentioned to you some of the cons during the driving segment it's not a completely ironed out vehicle yet this is also the first model year and if you go on nhtsa.gov you can see all of the tsbs the complaints that owners have been having. So no, this car is far from perfect. And I hate to say this, but I would treat this as a lease and dump machine. I would take advantage of some of the low interest rate finance deals or the low interest rate leases. And after three years, I would just dump the vehicle and hope you have some equity left in the car so you can recoup some of the payments that you made over the last three years. That's how I would treat this. But if you love Mazda and you want to trust it and you want to keep it long-term, do you. You can always buy an extended warranty or don't. That's really up to you and your family.
All right, concluding thoughts on the 2024 base model Mazda CX-90. I'm obviously a huge fan of this product and I'm really glad to have this opportunity because this was an SUV I really wanted to like. And when I had that plug-in hybrid driving experience, I was so disappointed, it was so sloppy and did not feel cohesive to drive at all. And it would always crash over the bumps as well due to the added weight of the plug-in hybrid and the larger 21 inch wheels. Both of these things really hindered the comfort of the PHEV CX-90. But going all the way down to the base and driving this, it was a true breath of fresh air. Really feels like a luxury vehicle to drive. It's quiet, it's comfortable, and the handling is a bit of an interesting topic because yeah, we have really good stability at high speeds, out on the highway, uh, taking long sweeping corners, all of those things are great. However, when you take your everyday left hand, right hand turns for whatever reason, this vehicle, you have to kind of go a bit slower when you take those corners. And also when you push this thing to its absolute limit and you drive this at full 10 tenths on a back road, this vehicle kind of falls apart there. But the reality is in certain driving conditions, this does good, but pushing this to the limits, you can tell that the CX-90 does not like that. You always feel a resistance when you drive this thing at full 10 tenths. Mazda is trying to do luxury and not necessarily full on sports car type driving with all of their regular vehicles. You want a fun Mazda, you get a Miata, not a three row SUV. I just thought I would take the time to clear that up. And yeah, I can certainly live with this interior space. I don't mind some of the cost cutting that they're doing here. And if you want, you can always pay up for the preferred, preferred plus, get your heated seats, get your sunroof, get your wireless car plays and such, and you can still maintain the 19 inch wheels. And if you want to pay up a lot more for this, I mean, you can if you want simply to get things like the Bose audio system and some of the other rear seat features as well and to get better materials once again, like Napa leather seats, the good wood trimmings and all of that. It just depends on your budget, but just watch out for those larger wheels and the ride quality that's going to come with that. Now, as promised at the beginning of this video, here's how you can save 8% off MSRP on these CX-90s. You can reach out to a broker named Auto Companion. He is one of the largest brokers in the United States, and he is offering 8% off MSRP on certain trim levels of the CX-90, the base model included. On a $39,000 CX-90 like this, you're saving almost $3,000 off of MSRP. That just makes this an even greater value proposition because this simply feels so luxurious for that type of money. And if you wanna work with Auto Companion, he is located in the East Coast and he can ship nationwide. However, shipping is something you have to pay extra for, and he does charge a broker fee to access his deals. However, if you sign up with my affiliate link in the description box below, he will take some money off of his broker fee. Now, Auto Companion is also offering a free leasing calculator, which I'm gonna have linked in the description box below. This is a very powerful tool because it shows you the interest rate of a lease, the residual values, and the incentives that you can qualify for in your local area. As of right now, July 2024, Mazda is offering some really nice lease deals on certain trim levels of the CX-90, like 1% interest rate lease options. That is phenomenal and you're building a lot of equity when you do that. And if you can qualify for Mazda loyalty, I think you can get an additional $2,000 in incentives that stack on top of the 8% off MSRP. So that is really powerful. Certainly use that leasing calculator, whether you are financing, paying cash or leasing, because you want to see what incentives that you can qualify for in your local zip code. But right now, I also saw that Mazda is advertising like 0% finance deals for 36 months. If you can afford those payments, that's also 
really great. And again, these things, they change every month. So if you're watching this in the future, yeah, these numbers are gonna be different. However, Auto Companions leasing calculator that will update every month with the latest lease programs and the latest incentives. And if you just go on Mazda's own website, you can see what the latest finance deals are for your local area. So that's how you can keep up with all that stuff. And yeah, impressive SUV, phenomenal out on the highway. As I already talked about, the amazing stability, how quiet it is, and really good fuel economy on the highway as well, like 28 MPG and up while using regular fuel. This is a great product. Sure, it has its own little compromises here and there, which I made sure to report in great detail throughout this review. So hopefully you appreciated that along with this knowledge, this information and these resources. If you did appreciate this, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye.